See what's happening. Okay, good morning. Welcome to all of you who are joining us here. Thank you so much for your patience with us as we're figuring this out. And if you're joining us on Zoom, again, thanks for your patience. And especially if this is your um, first time uh, joining us on Zoom, it's not usually this, this challenging for us. <laughs> um, but we have only one, we, we had to go with the backup camera, so we're working on it. Um, and thank you again for your patience. Um, a couple of things coming up. Um, this Sorry, I can hear myself. It's kind of weird. Uh, this month, we're going to have communion uh, for the next three Sundays. Then we won't have communion for two Sundays. Then we'll have communion forever. So if you can memorize that schedule, uh, once we, on the 12th of September, uh, we'll, we'll have our Welcome Back Sunday. Our choir will come back. We'll begin our program year the Sunday after Labor Day, and we'll resume communion every Sunday at that point. However, in order to make that happen, we really need your help. Um, a couple more volunteers to help in distributing communion as part of church. So if you have not already been voluntold by me that you, that's one of your new responsibilities, <laughs> she knows who she is, um, <laughs> then uh, please, and you're willing to help with that one, one Sunday a month, please let me know. Uh, the next Sunday, on, in two weeks actually, on the 15th will be our backpack blessing as our kids start the school year. Uh, we could also use a number of volunteers with our children and youth. Um, we need most significantly volunteers to do childcare during church, particularly for our youngest 
um, five and under kind of kids. Um, as you may have noticed, we haven't had a tremendous amount of those uh, since COVID started, but we do have some and they might come back if they had childcare, uh, but we, we need some more volunteers to help with watching the little kids during church. Uh, and we could also use a handful of volunteers to support our youth group ministry by making lunch and joining them on some outreach efforts. That, that would be maybe once or twice a year. So if you're interested in any of those positions, uh, please let us know because we can use all of your help as we begin a new program year. Uh, it's different than it used to be, but um, we're, we're getting closer to what, the, what normal used to be. So thank you all for your help with that. Um, again, as we prepare for, those, for the reopening, on the 22nd, we'll have a healing service, particularly thinking about the experience of COVID, which I know is not over, but uh, a chance for us to grieve and mourn all that was lost during that time and to turn to God for healing. And then on the 29th, we'll have a congregational check-in where I'll talk a lot more about what reopening is going to look like for us in the fall and, and the different ministries of our church. Are there other announcements for the good of the whole? I know we're already running behind. All right. Well, it's very glad to have you all with us here in person as well online. Uh, we're glad to, to have you here and you are always welcome here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Our first lesson is from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to him, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for today, Psalm 78, verses 23 through 29. We shall read responsibly by half verse. So he commanded the clouds above. He rained down manna upon them to eat. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens. He rained down flesh upon them like dust. He let it fall in the midst of their camp. So they ate and were well filled. A reading from the book of Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, but each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, 
What does it mean, but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, and each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John.
On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So uh, when I was in seminary, I was taking a class at Harvard Divinity School and I got my first tract. You know what tracts are? If you're Episcopalian like me, you might not. <laughs> I had never seen one before, but they're these uh, pamphlets that people hand out that explain who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. I thought it was fascinating. I read the whole thing. Uh, I, although why my colleague thought a room full of seminarians all needed one of those is not really an avenue I want to go down at this time. <laughs> if you are familiar with tracts, you may uh, have an opinion about them. They don't exactly leave a lot of room for dialogue, and they're not really uh, what everybody accepts to be the truth about who Jesus is or how, what it means to follow him. But you know, the people who hand them out in seminary classes or bowling alleys or going door to door, for them, it really is an, a matter of urgency. It's a matter of almost life and death, eternal life. So, you know, their, their methods may not may be questionable, but their motivation is pretty pure. And besides, who doesn't want a key to salvation that fits into the palm of your hand, right? Today, we get one of those um, interesting in-between moments in the gospel. Last week, we read about Jesus, the miracle of feeding the 5,000. And today, the title of the gospel would be what happens after the feeding of the 5,000. The people wake up and they're like, wait, where'd he go? So they follow him and they're like, um, what else can you do? What else have you got going up your, uh, what are the tricks are there? What else is there up your sleeve? And Jesus sighs. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't sigh because in the gospel of John, like Jesus would never sigh because that's not how John sees Jesus. But you know, you can hear it, can't you? You can feel it, right? The exasperation. Jesus is like, look, this isn't about cool tricks that I can do. It's about what God can do. And the next trip, trick up my sleeve is eternal life. And you can't get that from a piece of bread, no matter how miraculous it might seem. What you need to do is reorient your whole life around Jesus and around God. And I'm trying to help you see how to do that. And all you want is a sandwich. Ugh. I can imagine that at times God is kind of exasperating with us or wants to be. But, you know, to be fair, the feeling's mutual, right? Sometimes. Because think of the, the Israelites, right, in the, in the wilderness. So classic, right? You know, I know you just delivered us from slavery, but, like, what are we going to eat for dinner? No, I don't want to eat that. Can you take that back and get me something a little bit better? I tell you, you know, the Israelites lived in a time where everything was changing and life really was brutish and short. And we live in a time where you can get anything delivered to your door, the, anything you want practically delivered to your door, probably within a matter of hours, right? We can walk into a restaurant or order takeout if you're feeling worried about growing variants. 
and we can get anything we want, really anything we want to eat. Someone else will make it for us, prepare it, lay it out before us, clean up after us, right? If the Israelites who lived in a volatile, ever-changing world met their own salvation with a series of complaints, what hope is there for us? I mean, how are we ever going to accept the food that God is giving us? I'm not talking about actual food, just so you're clear here. But of course, neither was Jesus, right? I'm talking about our faith. I'm talking about all those things that Paul talked about in the letter to the Ephesians. Beautiful imagery, isn't it? All of us, one body, growing in our faith, growing into the fullness of the gifts that God has given us. It sounds beautiful. And it's really, really hard, right? I mean, not only can we get whatever we want delivered to our door or for, put it before us for dinner, We've been raised in a culture that tells us that the most important thing is me, right? Me having whatever I want, getting what I want, taking care of myself, protecting my things. I should be weary of anybody who's strange or different. And I should make sure I keep everything that's mine in my pile protected from all the other people, right? The only one that matters is me. Paul says we are one in God, right? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. That's a very different one than the one that we're being taught is most important. And it's, it's challenging, right? To try to live into the fullness of that, to try to live outside of the fear that we're being taught. And you'd think that Paul would know that because he was in prison when he wrote this letter, right? You'd think he'd have some awareness of how challenging life could be. But it doesn't seem like he does. One of the commentators that I was reading this week on the letter to the Ephesians said, um, Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians while exercising his ministry from prison. And that's the difference, right? Paul didn't experience himself as being in prison or being tortured or being you know, alienated or in trouble. Paul was delighted to be able to proclaim a vision of what Christ is calling us to. From this isolation of his prison cell, he was able to cast an image of what true community might be. A place where we stop yelling at each other, you know, and start actually listening to each other. Where we see our needs and our wants and our desires, not as just our own, but as, as drawn in together. I read an article uh, in Time Magazine, it was a little summary of all these uh, researches that, that they did on people during COVID. That sounds bad. Um, and it might, might have been, I don't know. But it was people who study relationships, okay? So they, and it, can you imagine if you studied relationships? It's like perfect. You're like, oh, all these people who say they like each other are now trapped with each other. <laughs> Let us see what happens. I, I probably shouldn't joke because I know not all relationships withstood that. And for them, it probably wasn't very funny. But this was a summary of all these different studies they'd done. And one was about basically why people broke quarantine, right? Not always in the most um, you know, extravagant ways. I'm not talking about necessarily going to a rock concert. I don't know that there were any rock concerts to go to at that time. But remember pods, remember that? Maybe some people are still in them. People made a decision that even though they weren't in the same household as some people, that they would open up their social boundaries to more people, right? To maybe their neighbors, maybe their close friends, their family. And the, the research said that when they followed up on why this happened, that the need for connection was stronger than the fear of infection. The need for connection was stronger than the fear of infection. And I don't say this as a commentary on whether or not you should be dining in or taking your food out. That's really up to you. I am afraid we're gonna be wearing masks for a while, which I know none of us are thrilled about, but I wonder if this period of isolation that we've all been through with COVID could be for us a time to cast a vision of what connection might be. We know now how much we need connection, even if it's on Zoom, even if it's what we wear our masks. And so I wonder if we can cast aside all this fear right? The fear that we're taught that we should be afraid of other people, that we should look out only for number one and find a way instead, not just to need the connection, but to see it, to realize it. 
that no matter what, no matter how bad things are, no matter how much the tech isn't working or you can't see the picture, that we are connected to God and through God to one another. See, my thing about tracks is that I don't think that salvation fits into the palm of your hand. I wish that it did, but I don't think it does. I think that in truth, to follow Jesus is a decision you make all the time, right? Again and again, day in, day out, sometimes moment to moment. It can be hard to follow Jesus. It can be hard to, to eat the bread that you've been given even when it wasn't what you ordered. It can be hard to be in community with people who are, you know, frankly, a little bit annoying sometimes. And, and especially now is it's difficult to feel connected to people with all of the constraints that are put into our world to try to prevent illness. It can be hard to be one faith, one body. But Jesus was trying to tell us that this isn't about a morsel of bread. It isn't about a meal ticket. It isn't about a quick fix, right? Because following Jesus and opening your life to God, putting God at the center of your life can change your life. I mean, Paul was in prison, y'all. <laughs> but he was joyful, elated even, because he knew he was connected to God. He knew he was connected to other people. That's the kind of gift that God wants to offer us, not just a meal ticket, but the bread of angels, a chance to live into the fullness of what God is calling us to be. Meister Eckhart, who was a mystic, Christian mystic in the Middle Ages, said that all of us have the seed of God within us. Isn't that a beautiful image? And that it's our job to cultivate it, right? So you can listen to the voices of fear, the ones that tell you the only thing that matters is you and you getting whatever you want as soon as you can get it. Or you can listen to the other voices and feed that God seed within you. Listen to this force of love, which we know cast out fear. We know that. Feel the love that you have for God, that God has for you, and that we have for each other. And grow the seed within you. Because God's seeds grow into God. And we all have the ability, even in these challenging times, to grow into the fullness of what God has in store for us and imagined for us. Please rise as you are able and join with me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, please respond by the half verse. <clears throat> Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. 
that your name, your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Kate and Kim. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, they may be departed from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Carrie. Ask your prayers for all those members of our congregation uh, who have injured a limb. It's a growing list. I pray especially for Sue, who just broke her arm, uh, for Mary, still in the hospital recovering from hip surgery, and for Mimi and Ruth, recovering from broken ankles, and for Tom with his shoulder. For all those who can't be with us during worship and all those who are on our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of the heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Are there birthdays we can pray for today? You can be seated for the birthday prayers. Are you coming forward, Harry, or just trying to restart? Okay. <laughs> Anybody online who we can pray for today for birthdays? Nope. What about anniversaries? Carolyn Kendrick. Oh, Carolyn's birthday? Did we yes. Know? All right. So we'll pray for Carolyn for her birthday. Any other birthdays? Let's pray for Carolyn. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Carolyn, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the anniversary. We split you guys up this morning. Harry's here and Mary Jane's online. <laughs> Oh, she's driving back. Yeah. So we'll pray for Harry and Mary Jane for their anniversary. Come on up here so people can see you at least. <laughs> Just imagine Mary Jane and pray for her as she travels back from Texas. Any other anniversaries online or here? All right, let's pray for Harry and Mary Jane. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessings on you and Mary Jane. Happy anniversary. And blessings to you, Carolyn, for your birthday. Happy birthday. And now let us be grateful for all the blessings that we have received and offer our life and labor unto God.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia.
Hey, how are you, Marcia? I'm doing pretty good. How was your trip? You went to Omaha last week. Yeah, it, it how was your trip. Fine. Yeah. You enjoyed yourself? Well, it wasn't that type of trip. It was to go see some sick people. Oh. And um, one was a relative and one was a very close friend. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. That's yeah. tough. They, they put my cousin into, into the hospice and my girlfriend just finished her last chemo. Oh, really? So, <sighs> It was it like I said. It was a nice trip, though. It was good to get away, but the other end was still very sad. Hard. That's really hard. Yeah. But it's good you got to go. To, yes. Otherwise, you would have been you would have been upset with yourself. That's right. Did you drive back? Uh, I didn't. My son and my grandson did the driving. Oh, <laughs> yay! <laughs> and the only reason we drove was we couldn't get a car. If we flew, we they just didn't have any cars that we could rent. Oh, that's what they that's what they say. They're having a hard time finding getting cars, and cars are at a premium because they're not being made. Right. So we drove, we, we drove to Arizona because it was going to be a thousand dollars to rent a car here for two weeks. Yeah. And so we are in Arizona. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Gwen. We miss you. <laughs> Your student was wonderful today. I'm so, proud, I'm so proud of her. She just turned 14 two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's only been playing for a year? A little more than a year. That's amazing. She's On the organ. She's, she plays piano pretty well, and she's a very good student. I was going to say she's a very good student. student. Yeah. Right. So, Marsha, on the way down here and yesterday, I rewatched all of Roots, the Roots episodes. Oh, yes. Things, things really don't change, do they? No. <laughs> Not as much as we want. Not as, yes, that's correct, Michelle. Not as much Michelle. as we like. Michelle, your hair is really cute. Is the blue out? Oh, there's a little bit left. Not <laughs> much. Okay. <laughs> they said it would gradually disappear. Yeah. Cute haircut. You look perky. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> yeah. Nice to have it short, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is. Although, you know, you can't really pull it up. No. <laughs> you got to get it cut a little just a shade shorter. And then you yeah. Can yeah. Can handle it. <laughs> well, now that I see all my favorite people, I just want to uh, let you know, Kate suggests we resume our, our uh, uh, class um for the fall and i'm just wondering if you want to do that and if you have an idea of when to do that because it sounds like sundays are going to be very packed full especially for gwen um with starting a children's choir so um what do you think uh anytime i'm ready <laughs> Are you bored, Betty? <laughs> well, I just I just love the discussions we were launching into with the at the beginning of the study. The Phyllis, I assume you're talking about the Phyllis Tickle book, right? Uh, Emerging Christianity: The Net Church's Next Great Rummage Sale. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I wasn't in on that one. I, I know you weren't, but I I'm hoping you will consider joining us. I, I'll I'll. I'll think about it. <laughs> I've okay. got another book study I'm doing, so I'm reading pretty, <laughs> doing a pretty good job of reading these days. <laughs> I got it. And Ruth, you too. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering about what's the one that Kate was uh, talking about last week? 
the class. Oh, that's called Revive, I, I believe yeah. you're referring to. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a longer study. That, um, has anyone in this group been a part of that? They could speak to it. I, I don't have that much detail oh. about it. Okay, let's take a shower. I, I looked into doing it. Um, but, um, and you know, it looks, it looks good, but it's, it is long. It's a, it's a long. When you say long, what are you talking about? Uh, it's in, uh, several modules and has a, uh, retreat at the beginning and a retreat at the end. Uh, Kate talked about trying to give people a little bit of a break between the modules. Um, but I think I, I would be safe to say start to finish. It probably takes eight months or so. Would you say so, Michelle? Yeah, most of the school year. Most so, of the school year, yeah. You yeah. know, so it, it sounds like it's going to be a great class. But and what about I, yours? What's the difference between that one and yours? Well, this the one that we that we started on is is more contemporary theologian i mean she just passed away but but she um is talking about um it's more about the role of the holy spirit and um and modern theology and and, and it's, a, it's a look at the church and um, she points out that over, over history, uh, about every 500 years, the church um, kind of reinvents itself and discards some things that aren't working anymore and embraces newer ideas. Um, and so she said, she points out that we're long overdue for that kind of renewal in the Christian church because the last great quote rummage sale was the Reformation. <laughs> so it's it's a, a kind of a perspective that allows you to see what has been going on in the church in the last 50 years. It kind of helps you gain a little better perspective. Oh, this upheaval you know, all these different currents of struggle in the church, it's normal. We're, we're due for a major rethinking of the faith and how to be faithful. So uh, I was very intrigued by that concept and want to dig deeper into it. Plus, I'm coming up with my own list of what I think we could put in the rummage sale. <laughs> 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 change of subject I think I saw you know we're in Arizona and I not I think I saw an email about sacred ground do we have a sacred ground thing coming up this afternoon yes for the day time 1 1 30 1 30 1 30 okay so that's 12 30 Arizona time mm -hmm. okay <laughs> are we doing that on on zoom can uh, someone, yeah, on Zoom, if you want to, I will on Zoom. Me too. So what, actually, actually I can't stay very long. I have to <clears throat> leave. Now. Can somebody the tell me party. what the Zoom um, thing is for this afternoon? Uh, yeah. And wait, because I've got to get a pencil or something. Yeah. Is, is it the same as this morning? No. 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 Uh, no. The sacred ground, the ID is... 941. I hope this is right. <laughs> That's what I've got. I'll, I'll correct you if it's wrong because I've got it written down. So go ahead. Okay. So ID is 941 3190 And the password is 645942. That's accurate. <laughs> I'm glad, glad to know that little note at the top was right <laughs> okay so if i don't log on michelle you've got my phone number are you gonna be there yes if i don't log on would you call my cell phone and maybe we can figure out how to work it out sure okay well i will not be there 
Okay. I'm I'm going to sign off and have breakfast and do some exercise so I can get back on by twelve thirty. Well, I'm I'm going to sign off and take a dog for a walk and, and have lunch. Yeah. So. so it's going to be a hundred. It's uh, I think it's only supposed to be a hundred here today, but this week it's going to be a hundred and six. Well, Five hundred six. We come to get warm, and it really works. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. Where in Arizona are you? Scottsdale. Okay, well, that's hot because my sisters are down there. It's been over. A, it's been 113, 114, 115 constantly here for the last couple of weeks. Oh, wow. Where? They're in. They're in. Uh, they're in. They're in. They're in, they're in Phoenix. Okay, well, we've been here since third Friday, and it's not been that hot. Well, no, it was, like, last week, it was really hot down there. Last week, yeah. Yeah, I think it was last week, it was in the 100, 113, 114, yeah. 150. So I go walking. If I don't, it, it, today I started late. I started at 6, 6.30, but if I don't start at 5.30 in the morning, it's like, forget it. Yeah, it's, Outside. it's miserable down there. It's so. downright chilly here. It's 81 today. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going to sign off and call Joanna and tell her I think she did a great job. So I'll see some of you guys she later. Did. Yeah, she definitely did. tell her that. Yeah, she tell her she did a wonderful job. Okay, yeah. thanks. Bye. Hey, I love talking okay, to bye you. Bye, everybody. I'm going to make sure the dog gets her walk because she'll complain. She listens to church service. She thinks this is great, but and she always wants to sit on my lap, which I don't let her do. <laughs> but but I'll see you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Are you there? No. Okay. So long, everybody. All right. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. Right. Yeah. Okay, everyone's off now except us, and we can end it.